Chicago cops have released new details about the investigation into the death of Kenneka Jenkins, the teenage girl found dead in the hotel's walk-in freezer in the city on September 10. According to the Chicago Tribune, the newly released documents build up a picture of the night Jenkins died, how she went to an event in one of the hotel's rooms, became intoxicated, and appeared to have become separated from friends who left her briefly in a hallway while they searched for her phone and keys. One friend said Jenkins, 19, had been swaying, and that after she left with two friends, one returned for her phone. The two friends subsequently said she was missing, but didn't make it seem important, at first, police reports said. Video released by police shows Jenkins stumbling around to various corridors of the hotel, but does not show her entering the freezer. The discovery of Jenkins' body prompted mourning, rage, and wild speculation throughout the city of Chicago. People protested outside the Crown Plaza O'Hare Hotel where she was discovered, some believing the hotel staff did not take reports of her being missing seriously. According to the Tribune, a range of different theories circulated on social media as to what had caused her death, including accusations against specific people. The Cook County Medical Examiner's Office has said that Jenkins was died from hypothermia, exacerbated by the significant contributing factors of intoxication from alcohol, and a drug used in the management of epilepsy. According to the Tribune report, on September 11th an anonymous call was placed to police in which a woman claimed an acquaintance of Jenkins was a member of a blood gang and may have taken $200 in return for her death. The records released to the paper show that police mentioned that some people are speculating that Kenneka was sold for $200 while questioning a friend. But the friend said that the mention of that figure on a Facebook Live video of the party related to Jenkins' fear of a $200 fine if they used the hotel's parking lot without a permit. Meanwhile, friends told police they had experienced death threats from people who believed they might have harmed Jenkins. One even moved out of the city after experiencing harassment. When Jenkins' body was discovered in the freezer it showed no sign of trauma other than a small cut on her foot. She lay face down and had lost one shoe. But it is still not entirely clear why the freezer, which was not in use, had been left on. A hotel employee told officers that it was not being used by the hotel, but had been loaned to a company launching a new restaurant in the building. Here are my thoughts on the Kinnika Jenkins murder case. My opinion about it has always been, why so much sensationalism in this case? I mean, it's not like she was the first black female who ever died under mysterious circumstances. I do get it, the case does have sensational aspects to it, however with the help of thousands of YouTube conspiracy theories, it's hard to not get drawn into it. I will admit, I was so naive to YouTube videos I had no idea I was supporting the very activity I despised. It didn't take me long to realize, hey, this is too much. I realized at that point that every video I watch was not only supporting the sensationalism, it had already become a case of death exploitation. I spent several hours watching the different videos without a clue. I never had a clue. Then it dawned on me, you're being suckered into watching these videos. Suckered into these conspiracy theories. Suckered by these people posting the videos. Oddly enough, Occasionally I do a search and am still amazed at the tens of thousands of Kenneka Jenkins videos still posted to this day. Actually, I noticed some channels don't get any views of any significance unless they post a Kenneka Jenkins conspiracy video. Slowly but surely one turns to 5 which turns to 10 which eventually ends up being a channel with 80-90% to Kenneka Jenkins videos. Ranging from she is still alive to her mother was responsible for her death. It's outrageous and totally out of control. Furthermore it's sad that a 19 year old black female who died under the strangest of circumstances is still alive on YouTube to this very day, alive with the intention of exploiting the death of a young black woman for clicks and views and a check. It's like the strange and eerie YouTube side show that never ends the new conspiracy chapters are added to this strange show daily. A very strange phenomenon indeed, nothing like I've ever seen, ever in life.